Hey guys, welcome to the Epic Family Road Trip channel. If you're new to our channel, let me just reintroduce ourselves. Welcome to the Epic Family Road Trip YouTube channel. We are the Van Stralen family. Hi, I'm Peter. I'm Carol. I'm Caroline. I'm Peter Jr. I'm Dan. And our dog, Lando. We have been full-time overlanding and off-grid living as a family since 2016. During that time, we've had a lifetime of experiences together. We've seen incredible places, met fascinating people, found ways to serve, suffered setbacks, overcame challenges, were educated in the great outdoors, embarked upon our careers, and grew into young adults. As we open new chapters in our lives, one thing will always remain. Our love for each other, strengthened by memories and experiences that helped shape us. And as we look down the road ahead, we realize that our epic adventure is just beginning. Over the years, we've changed up the configuration of our vehicles, but pretty much always stuck with the Jeep uh, base model. So let me uh, just go through what we've had. So our very first year, we took off in a 24-foot motorhome towing my wife's Jeep, which was a 2012 uh, JKU, it's pretty much stock. The kids were, you know, this tall. Now they're my height, so things have obviously had to change over the years. Um, but that configuration worked and we really got out there and started traveling and seeing places, going to the national parks and so on. Along the way, we started to run into the whole concept of overlanding and someone suggested we go to an overland expo and learn what overlanding really is and it really appealed to us. What we were doing at the time was parking the motorhome, unhitching the Jeep, and then the adventure would really begin as we'd get into some of the backcountry. And um, so when we uh, started investigating about overlanding, we learned about rooftop tenting and so on, and then we met Matt from Exploration Outfitters down in Durant, Oklahoma, and he uh, really understood what it meant to build out a vehicle. So we took my wife's stock Jeep and put a rooftop tent, a roof rack, uh, winch, bumpers, uh, suspension, all the stuff to make it w where we could live in the Jeep, and we actually downsized from the motorhome to just living in the Jeep for a while. And we, we went out, shipped it overseas to New Zealand and Carol and I stayed in the rooftop tent and we had an ARB side awning with the tent and the kids would set up their cots in there. And uh, we had a slide out fridge and, and stove. And so it was just amazing. We really enjoyed that simplified way of life and we've been doing it ever since. So we thought it'd be a great time as we just got back from a trip up to uh, the end of the Trans Taiga in Northern Quebec which is known as the, the most remote road in North America. And I'll tell you, it was remote, but um, we just got back from that trip and we thought it'd be a great time to do another walk around of our vehicles. We'll start with uh, Worsley behind me. And uh, a lot of you have been asking, you know, what have we changed in the last couple of years and wh what works, what doesn't work and has it all stood up to the uh, usage. So 
Let's uh, begin with a, a walk around of, of the vehicle behind me, which is our 2019 JLU. And it is actually a JXL, and I'll explain what that means in a minute. But starting at the front, we have an ARB stubby bumper on it. And I'll put a link to the actual build video of the first phase of the build. But we went with a stubby and we went with 37 inch wheels. And because we knew we were going to be doing a lot of trail riding in North America, not so much international travel for the short term. So this is a great configuration for that. But I do want to tell you what our next phase is going to be. And we do want to go with the, the full side, full bumper as uh, the, these are illegal in some countries. And we're going to go down to 35 inch uh, wheels. But we'll get back to that in a minute. But as far as functionality the, here in North America, running a lot of rough trails, um, everything we have on here has been amazing. So the, the stubby bumper is very, very solid and it looks good. The next thing I'll talk about is our worn uh, Xeon 10S winch. I'll tell you what, a lot of people have winches on in the first couple of years with our first, with Vandy, the blue Jeep, Carol's uh, original Jeep, we had a winch and people would say, hey, how does it work? And we'd say, oh, we never use it. In fact, the only usage in the first three years that we got out of our winch was pulling somebody else out of a ditch. That's no longer the case. When we get the question, you know, how does your worn winch work? We can uh, let them know it works great. And we know that from experience. Well, I'll, I'll put a, another link to a series of videos where we got stuck in the mountains in some crazy spring icy snow. And we had to use the winch over and over and over again just to get out of there. So. Um, They've really come in handy and we've used them since uh, quite a few times. So it's a worn Xeon 10S and uh, it's perfectly matched for this size of vehicle. We also have the Spider line on there, which is um, synthetic, very, very strong. Uh, it's the second set, uh, the second spooling of line we've had on here because in the first one we wore it out from usage, but it stood up to the test, never broke during the entire time uh, that we needed it and the thing about the spider line it's got a reflective line all the way through it so it's great if you're working at night um, so that's the bumper and the and the winch which is a very important piece of equipment at least for the kind of overlanding we do if you're sticking just to uh, roads and paved roads you could probably get get along without a winch but we love doing a good mix the the trip we did before this was all the way up to Tuktiuktuk it was like a 12,000 kilometer trip I'd say about 70 percent on pavement and 30 percent off pavement really rough roads uh, going up to you know the Dempster up the last part towards the Arctic Circle we didn't use a winch on that trip but we got lucky because sometimes you know you'll get into rain yes you're on a road you're not on a trail but you'll slide off in the mud and so on so we recommend a, a win. We get a lot of questions about what these are, especially in the desert where there's not so many trees, but these are limb risers. So here in Ontario and a lot of places in Canada, Northern US, where you get into the trees, um, these come in really handy, especially on really tight trails. So you'll r run along through a tight trail and these will take the limbs and run them up and over the Jeep. Uh, sometimes they'll get stuck here, you reach out the window and flip it over, but that's what these are for. And uh, they've been really handy and they kind of reduce some of the pinstripes that you get by scraping through uh, the brush. While we're on this side of the vehicle, we did install an ARB Safari snorkel and for water crossings, this thing is necessary and we can find ourselves all of a sudden in deep water. And so um, we highly recommend getting one of these on if you're going to be doing any kind of trail running. Um, it's also really good for dust. And uh, we find ourselves in the desert where we're kicking up a lot of dust or even on roads like the road we just came off of, the Trans Taiga. It is a dirt road for 700 kilometers and um, you, you tend to kick up a lot of dust. So it's uh, something we highly recommend getting on your vehicle. Next, I'll talk, since we're here, about the KC highlights that we have on Worsley. We've got them mainly on the front. On Vandy, we've also got them all the way around. We just haven't got to that yet on this build, but um, these really come in handy. So that's a Pro 6 bar up there, and it's a mix of uh, flood and spotlights. So if we roll into camp late at night in the woods, we pop up all the covers or a couple of the covers, and it completely lights up the whole area. We also have two on the... On the uh, bumper and 
Those we can use in the fog. They've got the fog light covers on them. You know you're going to find yourself rolling into camp sometimes after dark. And if you're on a back trail and you can't see where you're going just with the headlights alone, get yourself some KC highlights. They, they work great and um, they've come in handy for us a lot of times. We are running General Tire Grabber X3s, which is a mud, mud train tire. And like I said before, we're running uh, 37s. They have gone everywhere with us and still have a lot of life in them. We've been very impressed. They've done incredible amount of on-road or on-pavement um, and then off pavement, you know, going up the Dempster, I mentioned earlier, there's some sections of shale that are just, you know, sharp shale that gets shot up into the tires. And we, we passed three or four people on the way up and on the way back again, that had blown tires. Um, but these stood the test and did incredibly well. We just did the Trans Taiga, which was all dirt and rock and getting into a mix of, you know, bumpy stuff, some graded stuff, uh, loose gravel, so we're very impressed with these tires and they've done an excellent job for us. Uh, for rims, we've got the AEV Savagra 2s. We just love the look of them, the simplicity, and um, they have held up in, to everything we've put them on, big, you know, from trail running to road running. When we're talking suspension, we went with the ARB Old Man Emu and it's the BP51 system. And uh, that's been incredible for us. Very, very good suspension. It's adjustable in the back, so you can, you know, you have to do it by hand. Uh, you get back there and make the adjustments in order to, you know, either increase the tension or soften it. Um, and then we found, we started carrying the motorcycles, on, at least one motorcycle in the back, and we started to get some sag back there um, with all the other equipment and people and everything we had in the Jeep. So we actually went to AEV and got a set of their high capacity, the blue coils. We had such a great experience. We put them on Vandy a couple of years earlier and they held up to all the weight. And we're talking fridge and stove in the back, rooftop tent on top, all of our gear in the back. And, and then we had uh, a motorcycle on the back, you know, on the hitch of Vandy and it stayed perfectly level. So we thought that's the way to go here. So we got the blue high capacity AV coils on here and we've never looked back. So now um, it can hold all the weight we've ever tried to put on it and more. I think I mentioned earlier, but I'll mention it again. Because we're planning on doing some international travel, we are going down to 35 inch wheels instead of 37s. It won't maybe look as cool, but uh, it's more practical, especially getting them into con a container and just the fact that some countries don't allow the bigger wheels. Another thing we're doing, which is a, a change coming, we are going to be installing power brakes on both vehicles. It just, because of the weight of these vehicles and the terrain that we go on, it just gives us an added layer of safety. And that really, really came to mind uh, when we were up in the mountains of Colorado late at night and we had to do some switchbacks. And we thought, you know, there's nothing more important right now than brakes. And so the power brakes are going to be a really awesome addition, but you need a different type of rim, a rim with a deeper, uh, set to it. These kind of go in this way. We need one that comes out that way so that the brakes can fit in there. But we'll be sure to uh, record on video that entire build when that happens. So this is the KC Pro 6 mount. It's custom made by KC and it bolts right in here really nicely. And so the whole light system sits up there and it's very quiet when you're driving and, and it's great. Um, but KC also has this custom mount plate for the uh, antenna, which uh, in the Jeeps we run uh, Midland GMRS radios, 40 watt, and they come with this really cool, small, kind of out of the way, I think it's called a ghost antenna or something. You can barely see it there, but the KC uh, rack has a mount for it, so it's nice and clean. All right, so just some small things as I work my way towards the back of the vehicle. We have these um, pull down hinge steps. These ones, I don't think this exact model, I don't think are in production anymore. You can look online, you might be able to find, but uh, there are a bunch of different brands and I'm, I've heard great things about them. So just, you know, whatever step you end up with, I think it's very important. We use these almost on a daily basis when we're camping and uh, to get up to whatever's up on the roof rack. So um, yeah, these are great. And then this one, because it's so high, we installed the uh, power step so we usually do that first that gives us a step up and then a secondary step and there you have it you're up 
so those have been nice additions and in fact pretty much uh, mandatory otherwise you'd have to carry a ladder around we're pretty tall all of us but you still can't reach what's up on the roof now I'm going to talk about um, the JXL conversion and we'll put a link to the build so you can see how that whole process works we did a thorough step-by-step -step build video um, but this was uh, the one we got installed was the first one ever on a JLU and it was kind of a prototype um, so they've been making improvements and what we're doing is just hardcore field testing it for them and giving them lots of feedback. Um, so talk to Red River Rigs um, if you're interested in finding out more about these. But we can share our perspective. We've used them now on some big trips and uh, have a lot to share about them. So I'll quickly review what we had before. We had a roof rack with a rooftop tent, which is a pretty standard configuration. And that was great for a long time for us, but then we got into a couple of years ago where we couldn't cross the border going south and typically what we did was chase summer so a rooftop tent was perfect for us when the weather got cold we'd go somewhere in the desert or somewhere down south and we'd be uh, happy but when we couldn't do that all of a sudden all of a sudden we found ourselves in very a very cold climate we're stuck in canada we drove as far as we could west right to the Pacific Ocean, which is pretty much the warmest place you're gonna find in Canada during the winter, but it does rain a lot. So in a rooftop tent for months on end in back-to-back -back rain, storms, with maybe one day a week where the sun comes out, and it, during that day we tried to dry everything. Good morning. But it got it got to the point where we decided for full-time uh, overlanding, we can't survive in a rooftop tent if we find ourselves in a situation where we can't get to a warmer climate. And so we started looking at what can we find that isn't a motorhome, that's an overland vehicle that will allow us to still get way off the road and up in the mountains, but also allow us to retreat to the four walls and the comfort of being inside and that's when we found jxl what that allows you to do is convert your jeep into an actual camper so you know you yes you have a pop-up and there is a section of tent up there but it actually is an interior camper so it allows us to retreat into there you know when it's cold when it's rainy and we put in some neat features which we'll show you like a, a heater in there um, so you can get really comfortable no matter what the weather's doing outside. And we've got um, Red Arc and Battleborn batteries, Red Arc power management system. So it's really like a mini motorhome, but it's on a Jeep chassis and it allows you to go everywhere you can go with a standard uh, Jeep. All right, so this version of the JXL camper has a, a rack that goes all the way around and you can just custom attach things to it like awnings. We put our ax up there. Um, we've got this temporary uh, fishing rod holder, um, which we haven't used that much, but it's basically just set there for now. And then on the back, we've got roto packs, um, and that was actually custom built by uh, our friends at uh, Exploration Outfitters. He cut uh, a roto pack holder. This one, uh, we've just got a a uh, rotopack that opens up it's like a toolbox but you could put water or f spare fuel there um, so that's kind of a neat addition but in general what the JXL is it extends your Jeep by 14 inches which for me is great I could never sleep in the back of a Jeep be without that extension it just be too short and too cramped so this gives you all the legroom you need and we'll show you the interior in a minute but we put a goose gear sleeping platform down there and it makes a really comfortable sleeping area. Um, so it extends it and then it pops up like a tent, but instead of being, you know, you have to climb up and you get into the tent, it's actually living space inside the Jeep. So it makes it so you could sleep upstairs, come down into the bottom part. You can actually pass right through to the driver's seat if you want. Um, so it's a, it's a whole mini camper.
with the JXL, you don't have a roof rack because you'd have, because this all pops up on hinges and you'd have to move the roof rack. But what you do have is a section up front here where you can put some gear and uh, strap it down. And so what we use this, po this spot for is um, to put a, an aloe box. And these guys, um, while I'm talking about them, they're waterproof, dustproof, and incredibly secure. So we use it for carrying all kinds of gear and it doesn't matter what kind of weather you run into, it's gonna be safe and secure in there. So that's a great way to use this spot. We also have a high lift jack mounted to the back here and it just simply mounted with the, uh, the hardware that came with the jack. And then on the, the rest of the JXL roof here, we have uh, our Red Arc solar panel. And uh, we'll go into a bit more detail later about the whole Red Arc system and the Battleborn batteries and how we maintain the power on that. But that the solar panel is working all day long for us. So it uh, keeps those batteries nicely charged up. So in here we have uh, all kinds of different things, but uh, a lot of tools like our tire repair kits, um, an electrical cord, we've got uh, siphons for the um, for fuel, spare straps, um, what else, fluids like oil and things like that for the vehicles um, when we're in very remote places and you know if we ever needed it we want to make sure we have it with us so it's just a very uh, handy uh, box to get, it's aloe box. This isn't a piece of equipment, but it's something we never leave, leave home without, especially when we're getting into extremely remote areas. Uh, take a second to talk about Global Rescue. Um, that's a service where, through our satellite communications, we use the Zolio satellite communicators. We can be as far away from the grid as possible, but the satellite will connect, and then we can communicate with them and get access to doctors, if, the, if we had, were to run into a medical problem, if we were to get into get injured or hurt, uh, one call to them or the push of a button and they will actually do medevac for you and so on. So it just gives us a level of confidence like, uh, like none other when we're in dangerous and far away places. So on this side of the rack, we've mounted an easy on cube, which is a privacy tent. And I'll show you how easy it is to use. Um, th this is from our friends at Equipped. Uh, who deal with easy on but this one is uh, is great So this awning is specifically for shower and anything else you need you know to set up some quick privacy Changing after swimming or something like that. So it just rolls down All right. It's really that easy. And that's that. It's quick and easy to set up and then it's just perfect for if you had to get in and change or take a shower. Um, you could even set up your, your toilet in there under certain circumstances. So very handy little privacy tent. In the past we've used standalone ones where you set them up separate but and they're also bulky and uh, something you know you you have to remember to take when you're packing for a trip this guy's always with us so very handy all right getting to the back of the vehicle uh, the jxl comes with its own steel bumper which is custom to the the setup gives that extension and then it has a receptacle for a tire carrier. We ordered an AEV tire carrier that could handle the 37 inch wheels and it fit nicely into there. And so that swings out with the tailgate. So that's a heavy wheel on the back there, but uh, it handles it no problem. Um, you'll see on the back here, we have a guard bag. It's made by Adventure Trail Gear in Canada. Um, but you see them all over the world and this thing has stood up to a lot of abuse. What we mainly use this for is uh, collecting our trash 
uh, as we camp and then when we get back to summer where it has uh, trash cans we're able to take it out dump it it's got lots of pockets so you can see we have even more spare oil here and uh, other stuff that fits into this bag you can use it for whatever and it's been through all kinds of rough weather including um, a Canadian winter so that tells you uh, it can stand up to a lot behind here we've got a couple of max tracks these are a must-have especially if you're getting way off road uh, in snow and mud um, they come in very handy and they can also be used to level your vehicle and then the uh, mounting the way they're mounted here is a uh, Max Tracks mounting system uh, that's sold by Equipped as well. If you go to equippedone.com, and it really easily, really easy to put them on, take them off. You don't have to get wrenches and bolts or wing nuts or anything. It just uh, gives you easy access to your Max Tracks. And having them on the back has been great for us. It keeps them out of the way. Uh, you don't have to climb up to get them, and so on. You can mount lights up on top of this. Uh, the AEV uh, tire swing comes with a post. We haven't done that yet, but we're planning on putting some. Uh, rear lighting from KC when we get a chance. We also have an awning off the rear of the vehicle here, which is um, this, the same width as the vehicle, which is really handy. It's on uh, sp it's spring loaded, so you can just pull it out and it's quite easy to set up. And uh, that's come in handy a lot, you know, if it's snowing or raining. The tailgate can be open and the glass can be up and it still works with the awning there. So it comes in real handy if we're just sitting in the back of the Jeep, you know, relaxing or sitting by the heater, for instance. Often we'll be cooking in this area and so it's, it's actually quite important to have shelter from the rain. So now I've shown you the exterior of the vehicle and the basic functionality of the camper. But now I want to talk about some of the things, some of the features that we've added to make it allow us to stay off grid and out in the wilderness for longer periods of time. So the first thing is uh, the Red Arc system. That's a battery management system and it's combined with three 75 amp hour Battleborn batteries. So that system has just been a huge game changer for us. Um, it allows us to stay out there and have incredible power to charge up our cameras, to run electrical appliances, uh, to run our Starlink, which uses a fair bit of power. Um, we've never had a problem since we installed this system. So um, I'll show you the management panel. It's called the Red Vision panel, and it allows us to see how much power is coming in, how much power we're using, and so on. To charge up the batteries, um, which have remained at, you know, pretty much from 60% to 100% ever since we got them, depending on how much we're charging, they charge by uh, all, the alternator when you're running so when you're doing a long drive you know those batteries are getting charged up but also there's a solar panel up on the top of the camper and that's con continuously charging while you're driving but also when you're sitting in camp during the day so that's really handy but we also installed a handy little shore plug so if we're sitting still for a while we can just plug it into um, you know at a camp or something and it'll keep the batteries charged. So the shore power, the alternator, and the solar panel come into the Red Arc system, which distributes the power and manages the batteries. Then the batteries store all that power, and then we have a 1500 watt inverter, which uh, converts it to 110. So now we have actually a power bar here with 10 outlets, um, which we can have all of those going, 10 different pieces of equipment charging or operating. Then we have a splitter with 12 USB ports, which we convert to USB-C. So, you know, for charging GoPros and lights and things like that, typically USB-C is the way to go. So it's a real luxury for us and it's been a huge game changer for us uh, to have this much power in the vehicle. It's like a, a cabin that you take with you into the forest on wheels. And uh, so that has been amazing. And we struggled for many years with power. We were using little inverters that plugged into the 12 volts so the Jeep had to be running. And uh, then, you know, we'd wake up in the morning and we killed our batteries. We'd have to boost from the other vehicle. Just, I could tell you a lot of stories where, especially when Caroline back in the day was editing in the Jeep, um, trying to charge camera batteries and trying to run the laptop at the same time. And so this uh, truly has been a, a game changer for us. So here in the back of the Jeep, we have the Red Vision panel, which allows us to see what's going on with the system. So you can see input and output. Um, how many amp hours you have left in the batteries, how much power you're using, and so on. There's your solar energy per day. So it's a really powerful system that allows you to manage what's happening inside the Jeep. So that's the electrical system. 
Another very important piece of this equation was getting heat in there. We knew we were going to be going up to the Arctic Circle, which we've done now in the fall when the, you know, we would wake up to frost and snow. Get the heater going. Yeah. Whew. It's a chilly, wet one today. Very cold and windy. Got some coffee going. We just got back from northern Quebec where there was, uh, it was sleet and hail and rain snow and um, we're always toasty warm in here and the way we do that is we install the Wabasto heater it's an Evo 40 it operates from a panel right here but it's also Bluetooth to my phone so I can I can control the temperature you know turn it on turn it off at night uh, set timers have it kick on at six o'clock in the morning if we want um, you can set the temperature thermometer so if it gets below a certain temperature it turns on and it'll automatically turn off when it reaches a certain temperature. I'll put a link to the install video where we had that installed and it fits into the 15 inch extension off the back here. There's a clean air intake on that side which takes the air in. The heater is down in the tub underneath the goose gear platform so you can't see it right now but it's built in there and then the hot air comes out the vent right here. It's a, it's a warm day so the temp, internal temperature is uh, already showing 88 inside but I'll just go ahead and set it to something higher than that so I'll go to uh, 91 Fahrenheit and then you'll hear it kick on and it'll start heating and when it gets to the 91 it'll turn back off. These heaters are very fuel efficient you can run them at full power for 14 hours straight on just one gallon of gas. Okay the heater is up and running and uh, just so you know that heater is wired into the Red Arc system so it's got constant power. You don't have to have the ignition on or the Jeep running at all. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. The other way you can do it with the app where you just hit the upper button until the, the lights go off and it'll go through its power down cycle and properly shut down. Um, in terms of fuel for the heater, it runs off of the auxiliary gas tank. So it's a gas powered, you can get diesel powered. We wanted to stick with one type of fuel. It just makes it easier when you're traveling. You don't have to go looking for diesel when, when you are putting gas in your vehicle already. So we never have to worry about fuel as long as our auxiliary tank has some fuel in it. So that is an incredible addition. If you're interested, uh, check out Wabasto. I got my boots wet in the river, but thanks to Wabasta, we got hot air drying them out. So we already had a Goose Gear sleeping platform installed. The way our Jeep is configured, we removed the two back seats and put in a full Goose Gear sleeping platform. And then for the extra 15 inches, we just custom made a board. But um, I think at some point, Goose Gear is going to make a custom piece that'll go right to the back. But for now, that does an incredible job and that makes a wonderful sleeping platform as you've seen on some of our trips. So not only does it make a great sleeping platform, but it also has little cabinets and serves as a perfect cabinet for our batteries, our inverter, our Red Arc power systems, and the heater. So everything's neatly tucked underneath the Goose Gear platform. So the folks at uh, JXL extended our hitch for us. Not every option comes with the hitch, but uh, that's something we needed because we tow a trailer. So they put in a 15 inch extension on there and extended the uh, plugins for the trailer brakes and etc. cetera. Um, so that's the configuration we go with. We can either run with our trailer and you, you might ask, where's the fridge and stove? Well, we opted to keep the uh, living space wide open because we have our fridge and our stove and our kitchen and all that normally in our trailer depending on where we are and what we're running so um, that way we can just pull into camp and and jump in bed if it's late at night without deploying too much of a of a campsite um, if we don't have the trailer like currently our last two big trips we did without the the trailer that means we're down a fridge and a stove so we have a portable jet boil two burner stove that we just take along in an alley box and then we uh, have been taking a cooler with us but we could for sure get one of the smaller national lunar fridges and slide it in here uh, without any problem and the red arc system and the battleborne batteries would power that uh, with ease we like to be flexible with our rig because we're in different territories different countries different places all the time different amount of people sometimes it's all five of us sometimes it's just carol and i so uh, that gives us the flexibility so now i've talked about the convenience of the jxl extension 
the comfort of the Wabasto heater, and the efficiency of the Battleborn batteries and the Red Arc power management systems. Lastly, I want to talk about our Long Range America auxiliary fuel tank. The addition of these tanks on both Jeeps has been a complete game changer for us, allowing us to stay in the backcountry twice as long as before. They fill automatically after the main tank is filled, and they hold 17 US gallons of auxiliary fuel. Whether you're on the road or camping in the backcountry, when your main tank is getting low, simply hit the transfer pump switch and your main tank will be refilled from the auxiliary tank. So there you have it. That's a walk around of Worsley, our 2019 Jeep Wrangler JXL. Um, I hope you found it inf informative and inspirational and hope it gives you some ideas when you're configuring your rig and planning on your next overland adventures. Just remember there's no perfect vehicle. If you go to a bigger one, you're gonna have more space, lots of comfort, but then you're not gonna be able to get as many places as you will with a agile Jeep, which can get you know, get any, pretty much anywhere you wanna go. And if you go smaller, then you lose some of that comfort, the ability to move around, walk around inside, but you get the agility that allows you to get places that you really wanna go. If you roll with a trailer, that gives you all kinds more storage and room, but then you, know, you always have the extra worry, another axle and another couple of tires that you have to have spares for. Uh, lots of things to consider, but no matter how you do it, the best thing is take the vehicle you have right now, throw some gear in the back and go out and explore.